Hey, good morning, St. Rose. I'm Mr. Falgaris. My name is Alec, and this is St. Rose Live. How you doing? <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, doing all right. Uh, your daily dose of everything happening here at St. Rose High School. On this morning's show, we have your morning prayer, the Pledge of Allegiance, the daily announcements, and our clip of the day, and it's a good one. It's this edition for Thursday, December 14th, 2017. Our schedule today is reverse. It's now time for this morning's prayer. Leading this prayer is Sister Kathy Nance. Please wait for Sister Kathy to invite you to stand. Put yourself in the presence of God. Clear your minds. Open your heart for this morning's prayer. Audio jungle. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I invite you now to please clear your desks, your minds, and heart of all clutter, and to place yourselves in the presence of God as we begin our day in prayer. In the season of Advent, we are reminded that Jesus came to invite us into the kingdom of God through his incarnation. Today's first reading is the, from the prophet Isaiah. In it, God assures the people, I am the Lord your God, who grasp your right hand. It is I who say to you, fear not, I will help you. The afflicted and the needy seek water in vain. Their tongues are parched with thirst. I, the Lord, will answer them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake in them. I will open up rivers on the bare heights and fountains in the broad valleys. I will turn the desert into marshland and the dry ground into springs of water. The first reading from Isaiah reminds us of God's generosity and willingness to give the people of Israel all that they need, including the mercy and kindness referred to in the psalm. Israel is striving to be a great nation and kingdom at that moment in their history. And these words from God remind them that they cannot do it on their own. It is God that helps them to be great. It's easy to identify with the people of Israel who desire great things, but easily forget that God is the giver of all good gifts. In the first reading, it is obvious that God seeks to assist, to help and to give good gifts. God is saying, fear not. I want good for you. God wants good for all of us. Advent is a time to remember the ultimate good gift God has given us all, which is the gift of his son, Jesus. Through him, we have our entrance into the kingdom of heaven. So often, like the people of Israel, we are afflicted and needy, and we seem to seek water in vain. Today, we listen to a refreshing promise of how much our God desires good for us. He will fill in what we need the most. And I invite you now to please stand as we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, like a loving parent, you offer me your comforting hand. Help me to wait for your coming with patience and to listen to what you ask of me. I want so much to be one of your people and to live my life in you. Thank you for the way you bless my life. Thank you for listening to my prayers and for planting deep in my heart the knowledge that with you, nothing is impossible. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please remain standing for the pledge. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the, to the republic, republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, St. Rose. Today is Thursday, December 14, 2017. Today's schedule is reversed. Let's take a look at our daily announcements. What's going on? Uh, well, where will you be on Friday, January 19th, 2018? Will you join the march with millions of other Americans and stand for the sanctity of life? The spots on the bus are filling up, and if you want to go on the trip, you need to pick up a permission slip in the main office, have your parents sign it, return it to the office, 
It's ten dollars that will secure your spot on the bus and you'll be going on the March for Life trip. The doctor's orders are in and we have a prescription to fill. Operation Santa has begun. St. Rose is collecting medical supplies to benefit the Henry B. King Medical Brigade. So make sure to bring in your items for Honduras and help your class win a treat in your homeroom on December 20th, which is the day after the deadline. Now here are the current standings. What do we got? In fourth place, the freshmen with 50 bags of cough drops add a total of 50 points. In third place are the juniors with 30 bottles of Tylenol for a total of 60 points. Second place are seniors with 53 bottles of vitamins with a total of 106 points. And the sophomores are in first place with 94 tubes of toothpaste, 177 toothbrushes, and wow. seven bags of flosses bags. for a total of 145 points. All right, all donations are due by Tuesday, March 19th. That is this upcoming Tuesday. There is still time to make a difference for your class, and most importantly, the people of Honduras. Note, the scoring of the Tylenol and vitamins count as two and two points. Right. The uh, four, four toothbrushes count as one. All other items count as one point. Okay, that makes sense. Our support allows the medical brigade to work with over 2,500 people just in their one-week visit. So let's make Operation Santa happen. Thanks for your support. The guidance hallway will be closed to students' traffic during the lunch period today. Please plan ahead and use an alternate route. The nurse's office will be open. Do you know why it's closed? Um, no, I don't. Oh, I, know. <laughs> Do I, don't know know? I don't know if we're allowed to say. All right. Uh, <laughs> attention students and faculty, Make-A-Wish will be holding its final fundraiser this year. There are six faculty members who have volunteered to dress as an elf for the day. Students will place donations in the appropriate faculty member's collection can. The faculty member with the most money collected will have the honor of being elf for the day. Now, who are those uh, faculty members, Alec? Um, they are Mr. O'Halloran, Mr. Crilletti, um, Mr. Appleyard, Mr. Thompson, Ms. Sister Kathleen, and Mr. Perino. All right. Find your coins and dollars. Collection cans will be available through Wednesday, December 20th. Sounds like fun. All right, and those are your daily announcements. If you missed any of the announcements, check out our website or just the monitors in the hallway. You can also rewatch our show online. It's now time for today's Daily Trivia 10 question. See if you and your classmates could answer today's trivia question. Second trivia. What is the largest country in the world without a river? Saudi Arabia, Greenland, Australia, or Iran? Though it's situated between the Red Sea and the Persian Gulf, Saudi Arabia does not have a river running through it. Have you heard of climate change? Yeah. The largest meeting for climate control takes place in Paris, and even though the United States has withdrawn from the climate agreement, Paris wanted to get a jump start on making changes to better the environment. Let's take a look at it and see how that's going. You don't have to look far to see how complicated the climate change issue can become. In fact, right outside the Paris Conference Center's front door, there's a battle going on between two million Parisians and the one million suburbanites who commute into the city each day. Four years ago, city officials began closing down sections of express lanes along the River Seine in Paris, hoping to replace cars and trucks with bicycles and pedestrians in order to limit pollution. But after a year-long study, air pollution officials found that roadway closings only pushed the pollution from the river where no one lives to Paris neighborhoods where people do live. If you take out cars, you have better um, air quality. It's better because less emission. But if you put them in other places, in other routes, you will have more pollution. What's more, it was expected that an increase in traffic would encourage commuters to use public transit, but it hasn't happened. According to rail statistics, fewer people are commuting using suburban trains because service is deteriorating. One in four trains on some lines are delayed because of breakdowns and strikes. Commuters are increasingly furious with their lack of alternatives. To live in Paris, it's too expensive, so they have to go in the suburbs to live, and take the metro, the transport, the public transport, but it's not really sure, it's not really safe, and you have many, many delays. As well, the increase in traffic congestion on Paris streets adds time to commutes and can delay emergency vehicles which may get stuck behind the idling cars. City officials say it's worth it for the pleasure Parisians and tourists derive from a leisurely walk or ride along the river. There are thousands of tens of thousands of people who are just using it now 
uh, with biking, with uh, walking, or just enjoying uh, this new park in the center of the city of Paris. That may be true in the summertime. However, when the weather turns, the strollers and riders disappear. But the cars do not. What's more, the city's ambitious scheme to encourage bike sharing has had its own problems. The company behind it reporting that because of vandalism and theft, 15 to 20 percent of the bikes were lost each year, and maintenance costs went through the roof. We have to work on uh, each bicycle almost uh, every 15 days. The old bicycle rental stations are now being ripped out to make room for a three new higher tech bike sharing schemes, something which may solve some of the problems. But as city officials here have found out, convincing people to abandon their cars and go green is proving more difficult than at first thought. Jim Bitterman, CNN, Paris. All right, before we get to our clip of the day, just students and faculty, if you didn't know, today is the vote for net neutrality. On tomorrow's show, we'll have a little bit more information about that, but it's quite interesting. So if you just search net neutrality online, it has to do with the government's control on the internet. And we'll have more about that on tomorrow's show. But it's now time for today's clip of the day. A man in Arizona's diner recently ordered some bacon and eggs. That sounds great. And his bill was $17, but he left a $2,000 tip. When going out to eat, normally 20% is usually considered a really good tip. This was more than 11,600%. He left a note that said, please split this with the whole staff. Merry Christmas. That means a total of more than $200 per employee. This sir, his server said you hear about this kind of things on the news, but you never think it will happen to you. And that's today's clip of the day. That's a feel good story. And thanks for watching this edition of St. Rose Live. We hope you enjoyed it. I'm Mr. Falgaris. I'm Alec. Have a great day here at St. Rose. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Thank you and God bless.